Lesson five, topic slope, learning target. I can identify types of slope and find slope from a table. First off, some vocab. Slope is our rate of change and it describes the steepness of a line. So think about mountains. How steep are they? Hills, are they at a steep incline or not? We have different ways that slope is looked at, um, the ways to calculate slope. So we have our change in y over our change in x, right there. That's going to be the one we're going to use a lot. Um, so if you look at the graph, we can find the slope by calculating how much did we go up and down, which is your change in y, and how much did we go left and right, which is your change in x, kind of makes a little triangle. So then that kind of leads us into this rise over run. So rise is how much do you go up or down, run, how much do you go left or right. And that gives us our slope. So then we have slope in real life. So this, if you've ever seen a sign that looks like this on a road, it just tells you the, the percentage or the slope, because slope can be written as a percentage, of the hill coming up. So certain trucks can't go up or down hills if they're too heavy and the road is too steep. So it's marking signs letting you know how steep the road is coming up. So you'll see a lot of those in the mountains. And then we have roller coasters. So when you go up that roller coaster and then you go down, they had to calculate all those slopes and make sure that it was all safe for the roller coaster to proceed on the tracks. And then we also have uh, the Leaning Tower of Pisa. So you've got different examples where you can use slope in real life. Now we have types of slope. We have our positive slope, which means you're going up the mountain. So positive slope, if we look at this graph, if you start at the left-hand side and work your way toward the right-hand side, you'd be going up. So you would be walking up that hill. Downhill is a negative slope. So if you start at the left-hand side, start yourself there, and you were to walk to the right-hand side, you'd be going down the hill. Then go down here. Horizontal slope is just left and right. It's just like a straight left and right line. If you were to walk that, it'd be like walking on the ground. So you wouldn't go up or down, you just go straight across. So that's a zero slope. And then we have undefined slope, which is just for a vertical line. So vertical lines go straight up and down. So if you were to try to start at the top of this and walk on this line, it wouldn't work. You would need some climbing gear. Otherwise, you would go woo -hoo, smack and fall straight on the ground. And it wouldn't be good. If you guys watch SpongeBob, it's like the bikini bottom drop off. Just undefined. Would not be successful climbing that. So um, we have this device to help us remember what kind of slope we have. It's called Mr. Slope Guy. So you can see here it says positive, so it demonstrates what a positive graph looks like. Here we've got the negative symbol, so it reminds you that negative looks like that. And then down here we've got circles, so those represent zeros. So it reminds you that left and right horizontal line, that's zero slope. And then his nose is a vertical line. And there's this U right here, which reminds us that that slope is undefined. So if it helps you use it, if it doesn't, don't use it. And now let's practice calculating slope from a table. So if slope is positive or negative, it'll be a positive or negative number. So we want to calculate that number because that number is going to be important for us. So to calculate slope, we're going to find our change in y and put that over our change in x. So slope is going to be a fraction. It's going to be one number over another, which makes it a fraction. So m equals, I'm going to draw that fraction bar. So we're going to start with our change in y values. So if we wanted to get from negative 3 to negative 1, how much would we need to add or subtract? Well, we would need to add 2 to get from negative 3 to negative 1. 
Now let's do negative 1 to positive 1. We would still have to add 2. 1 to 3, we would have to add 2. 3 to 5, add 2. So you can see consistently we're adding 2. So that is your change in y plus 2. So on the top of my fraction, I'm going to put a 2. Then we are going to do the same thing for our x values. Find that change in x. So how much would we need to add or subtract to get from negative 2 to negative 1? We would need to add 1. Negative 1 to 0, plus 1. 0 to 1, plus 1. 1 to 2, plus 1. So our change in x is positive 1. So I would put a 1 on the bottom of my fraction. And we always have to ask ourselves, can we simplify that fraction? 2 over 1? Well, that just means divide. 2 divided by 1, 2 divided by 1, is just that 2. So really, our slope is 2. So m equals 2. All right, let's just do one more example. We've got another table. So again, we want to do the same process. Calculate your change in y, and then put it over your change in x. So m equals, draw that fraction bar. Start with my change in y, so 6 to 4, I would need to subtract 2. 4 to 2, subtract 2. 2 to 0, subtract 2. 0 to negative 2, subtract 2. So my change in y is subtracting 2, which makes it negative 2. I do need that negative sign. Make sure you bring that with it. All right, we'll do the same thing for those x values. Negative 4 to 0, we would need to add 4. 0 to 4, add 4, 4 to 8, add 4, 8 to 12, add 4. So our change in x is positive 4. So we have negative 2 over positive 4. We don't need the positive sign because 4 is just positive by itself. However, we do need to ask ourselves if we need to reduce this fraction. Negative 2 over 4 can be divided by 2 on both top and bottom. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So that reduces to negative 1 half. So that would be our slope. Our slope would be negative 1 over 2. That's all the notes that I have for you today. Thank you for watching this video. And you can move into your practice.